Now, if you struggle with your designs, you kind of look at them and think this isn't as professional as I would like it to be, but I don't know what the problem is, then this video is going to be a great starting point for you. I'm going to take some basic principles of design, some user interface design. We're going to take a look at an example, a pretty bad example, and then I'm going to show you how I would tend to approach this, some of the things that I would follow, just to make sure that everything you create has that visual hierarchy and just gives over the right information to the end user, making their experience a good experience. So let's take a look at the example that we're going to be using, and then we're going to go ahead and just change everything to make it look considerably better. Okay, so this is probably a little bit extreme, but it does highlight some key issues that are inherent in lots and lots of designs that I see online. Spacing, visual hierarchy, color schemes, those kinds of things. They're all incredibly important, and once you understand the basics, that can take you an awful long way. So we take a look at this, you can see that we have basically a 50-50 split design, various different fonts, typography styles, a lack of spacing, somewhat too much contrast in various different ways. We're going to address all those things. So let's hop over into the page. Now for this example, I'm going to be using Gutenberg, Generate Blocks and Generate Press, but you could use pretty much any kind of tool that you can to create and design your websites. It doesn't have to be WordPress related, it can be anything. It's the techniques that are important. OK, so this is what we're starting off with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and we're going to use that as our starting point to correct the issues that we can see. So we're going to come down, we'll just select our container and we'll duplicate this. So we now have an identical duplicate. So first of all, I'm not really fussed on this bright purple background. Yes, it's a, a color that's actually being used inside the design, but I think for this example, it's a little bit too much in your face. Let's go ahead and change that first of all. We'll select the container and we're going to come into our colors and we're going to set our background color. Now you can see that I've got some global color set up inside you and we're going to be using these for consistency. So for this example, we're going to use this sort of pale gray because I think there's enough visual separation there from other sections on the page to give it some life. But also, it means that if we take the background away once we've kind of addressed some other things, it doesn't matter if the background's there or not. We're going to use some techniques to make sure the things just work. Okay, so with that background in place, you can see that obviously throws out quite a few other things. So the next thing we need to do is address the background colors that are being used in each of these cards. For this example, where we've got this light or pale gray, if we choose white as our background color, there is enough of a separation to suggest the difference in the card to the background. So let's do that. Let's select our first container, come into our colors and set our background color inside there. We'll set this to be white. And as you can see, we now have some visual separation. We can take that one step further by using some simple clean drop shadows. You don't have to, but they're great if you want to just create a little extra dimension. And as long as you use them sparingly and subtly, they can have a really nice effect. So let's go ahead and do that. For this example, we're gonna come into the effects and open up the box shadow options, and we're gonna just choose the options inside there. Generally, stay away from the default settings because they look absolute garbage. What we're gonna do with this is we're going to increase the spread, which is just basically the size of the actual shadow itself. So kind of the higher the spread is, the further off the page the item looks, in this case, the container. So we're gonna set this to be, we'll try somewhere around about 10 pixels. And then we're going to adjust the blur to make it a little softer. We'll take that up to about 20. And we're also going to come into our color, and we're just going to make this a little bit more transparent, so a little more subtle. And there we go. So now you can see, if you look at the difference, let's just set the background of the second container to be white. And let's just go into our colors, set our background to white. And we're also just going to quickly, so we can see things, increase the gap between the cards, because currently this is a little bit too close, so I'm going to set that to about 50 pixels. That'll give it a nice separate space. And as you can see, with the one on the left-hand side with the really subtle drop shadow, it stands off the background really nicely, whereas the one on the right-hand side still has enough separation, but doesn't stand off, keeps a sort of flatter kind of look. So it's up to you which way you want to go. The other benefit, though, is if we set the background to our container to be white or clear, Let's just go and set our background on there and we'll just clear that color. You can see with the drop shadow in place, we still have enough separation to suggest that is separate to the background. So there's various different ways in which you can use these kind of techniques, but use them subtly is kind of going to go a much longer way than just slapping a really horrible looking shadow using default settings straight out of the box. So let me say, let's put our background color to that pale gray again. Okay, so we're already on track. 
Now, next thing we need to do is get rid of the border around the container because it's no longer needed. So let's get rid of that. So now we've got our image and everything flush against the sides. And as you can see, if we take a look at the designs, they're currently about 50-50 split. The image takes up about 50%, the card takes up about 50%. That's not what I want. Kind of working in the sort of third, separating things up into three different sections. We can either go with the image being smaller and taking like the modern development, the heading, and maybe even the sort of meta information, putting that up onto the image itself, applying an overlay, changing the background colors, those kinds of things. But I think for this example, that's probably a little bit too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to address the bottom half and we're going to make that a little bit smaller just to close that bottom section up, just to make things visually balanced a little bit better. Before we do that, though, let's go ahead and address the obvious thing, which are the colors of the typography, because we can't see anything. So we'll select our heading first of all, our headline, come over to our colors. We're going to use one of our global colors again. So we're just going to choose our text color and set that to be this sort of teal color. So that now has a nice visual separation. We'll address sizes and typography in a moment. Let's go to our second headline, which is our meta information. We're going to just change the text color on there, and we're going to set this to this sort of medium gray. I don't want it to be the same color as the heading. We need that visual hierarchy. And then we're going to do the same for the actual body text itself. So we're going to come into our colors, come into our text color, and for now we'll set that to the same color. Things are already looking a little bit better. We need to address the spacing and the sizing. So the first thing we're going to do is give ourselves some breathing room around the typography, get it away from the edges of our box. So let's select our headline, come into our spacing, and we're going to adjust things on here. So first of all, let's go to our left and right. We're going to set those. We're going to try 30 pixels to see what that looks like on the left and right. That looks pretty good. It gives us nice space around the outside edges. So using that same set of values, we're going to come to our second headline into our spacing. And we're going to do the same thing again. 30 left and 30 right. And for the headline, third headline, which is the actual content itself, 30 and 30. And finally, for our button, we're going to do the same thing on there. And we're going to give it 30 at the bottom as well for now. So you can already see that visually the balance is starting to become a lot better. If we take a look at our previous example, which our starting point, that looks horrible. But once you put the spacing in place and the drop shadow, it already looks considerably better. But we've still got more things to do. Our heading size, that's perfectly fine for this example. We could change it, we could go larger, smaller, depending upon the amount of text you expect to have in there. However, when we take a look at the meta information and the actual body, there's a kind of imbalance there. You can see, if anything, the body's fighting for your attention over the heading, whereas the meta information is basically lost. So we need to address that next. Let's start off with our main body content. Let's come into our typography. We're going to adjust the weight inside there to start off with. We're going to set that to about 300. That already looks better. The font size is currently set to 20. Now, generally, your base font size for most body text is around 16 pixels. So we're going to set this to be 16. And as you can see, that already looks better. We've now created more visual hierarchy. Now, the next thing I want to address is the spacing between these elements at the moment. Now, if we take a look at the meta information and the gap between the modern development, the title, and the meta information looks a little bit too big. We still want breathing space, but at the moment, it just looks a little disjointed. So to address that, we're going to select that. We're going to come into our spacing, and we're just going to just pop in a minus 10 margin on there just to kind of close that up and balance our, our spacing out a little bit better. That already looks considerably better. The other thing I want to do is just take this modern development and give ourselves a bit more breathing space at the top as well. So we're going to select that, come to our spacing, and we're going to just increase the margin at the top there to 30, just to give ourselves a little bit more breathing space. And that already looks better. Now, finally, we've got the button. Now, because with most card designs, the image can be clickable, the title can be clickable, the whole card can be clickable. I think the need for the button is still there, but it doesn't need to be quite so in your face. So to address that, we're going to get rid of the background color. We're going to put a simple chevron and just change it to a much simpler kind of button just by using text. So what we're going to do is we'll select that button. We'll come over into our colors. We'll set this to be clear color on the background, and we'll change our typography, our text color. For this example, we could keep it to be in a black, 
or we could go for the same gray, or we could even go for a teal color that's kind of the same as the heading. However, for this example, I think we're gonna keep this to the contrast too, which is the sort of lighter gray. Next up, we're gonna come in and we're gonna add an icon in so people can see that this is a button, something to click on. So we're gonna come into general, we're gonna choose the right-hand chevron, and we'll set this to be over to the right-hand side. You can adjust any spacing you want. So at the moment, that looks a little bit too far away for me. So we'll just eyeball this. Uh, let's go for something like 0.3. Actually, let's go for 0 0.2. That looks better. Okay, so now if we take a look at the actual Chevron itself, because we, we're dealing with uppercase and lowercase text, you can see it kind of looks like it sits too high. Now, this is going to lead me on to something that I think is important. Whenever you're working with things like this, Sometimes you need to eyeball it and not just go with the numbers. The numbers might tell you that everything is perfect, but visually something is just a little off. And this example, like I said, that chevron just needs to come down just a, a hair. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our top padding and we're gonna set something, let's go for 0 0.02, 0 0.2 I should say. Actually that looks pretty good. Let's try 0 0.3. And that now looks like it just sits a little too low. So just by, Pushing that down a tiny, tiny bit, it already looks better. Now we need to address the hover state and also to push this over to the left-hand side so now everything lines up. So to do that, let's come into our buttons. Let's just get rid of our sp spacing orange here a second just so we can see what we're starting off with. We'll remove that from there. We'll also come to the button itself, come into our spacing, get rid of our padding. So now we're on pretty much a clean slate. So let's go back to our button. So we know we use 30 for all the other spacing, so we need to do the same thing here. So we can use the margin if we want to, or we can use padding. It doesn't really matter too much in this example. Let's just say from the left, we're going to do 30. Bottom, we're going to do 30. And just to make sure, we'll do 30 on the right as well. So now again, let's take a look at that. And everything is now lining up much, much better. The other thing, and the final thing I want to address now, we actually take a look at this, is the Meta information is still just a little too light. So select that, go to typography, and let's just increase the weight of that to 300 just to give it a little bit more weight. What we've done now is we've created something that has more balance to it, is a little bit more subtle, but also looks much cleaner, much more professional with exactly the same amount of information inside there. If we take a look at the previous, you can see we've got the problems with Everything is fighting for your attention and nothing really knows what it needs to be doing. Whereas with our example, we have something that's cleaner, much more subtle and looks considerably better. So let's go ahead and just copy all those styles over to the right hand side and we'll take a look at this on the page itself without all this visual clutter. And there we go. There's the end result inside the browser on the page looking much, much better than what we started off with. You can see the drop shadow gives us that separation. Everything looks a little bit cleaner, a bit more professional. The balance is there. The image takes up more space in the bottom section. Our buttons look cleaner. There's nothing fighting for your attention other than the things that need to be there. Okay, so that's what we've ended up with. This is what we started off with. And I think you can probably agree it's a considerable improvement. This is just the first in a series of videos that I want to create on showing you how to take simple principles of design and use those to create much more professional end results for you or your clients. Now, I've got a set of topics I want to cover, but I would love to hear from you the kinds of things you'd like to see me cover in future videos about user design. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.